Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Although we pretty much all thought that Nvidia was done with their Pascal generation of graphics cards in terms of new models, a wild rumor suddenly appeared out of nowhere and it indicated that we still might get one more. A few weeks later that same rumor turned out to be correct, which is why today I have this GTX 1070 Ti in front of me. Yes, that's another TI offering from Nvidia, which is here to fill the gap between the two first comers for this generation, the GTX 1080 and GTX 1070, and which before all comes in as Nvidia's response to AMD's new Vega GPUs, where they with the GTX 1070 Ti aim to fight with Vega 56 model as it proved to be a pretty feisty competitor for its price point and others surrounding it. Compared to its similarly named brother, it carries 512 the cores more, so that's 2432 in total, and that's a pretty decent bump. We still have 8GB of GDDR5 video memory, while the reference base GPU core clock is slightly higher, 1607MHz, but they've kept the same boost clock of 1683MHz. Of course, putting in some more CUDA cores into it resulted in a higher TDP, which is now 180 watts instead of 150 with GTX 1070. But enough about that, let's check out the card up close. Although Nvidia showed off their reference version of the GTX 1070 Ti, aftermarket solutions from the board partners are already available right from the start, which made this launch a bit easier for everyone. One of those is actually here with me, and that's MSI's immediately recognizable Gaming X series. It comes in carrying their famous twin frozer cooler design, which is now in its sixth generation, and which I, and probably you too, already came across with in a bunch of my previous reviews of the ongoing graphics card series, being it Nvidia or AMD. In terms of the construction, it holds four nickel-plated copper heat pipes and contact plate, paired with big aluminum heatsink and two 100mm Torx 2.0 fans, while in terms of the aesthetics we have this black and red plastic outer shroud. We also have for this series your standard metal backplate with dragon drawing and some other details in the form of small cutouts like so. Speaking of the details, RGB LEDs are all set on your usual spots for a Gaming X card. On the back top portion we have these red inserts, while on the side MSI's dragon logo, all of which is controlled via MSI's new Mystic Light software utility. Bottom line, it's hard to go wrong with this model in terms of the build quality and looks. Finally, when it comes to ports and other input-output points, on the front we have a common set of video outputs, three display ports, one HDMI and one DVI-D, while on the back there's one 8-pin and one 6-pin PCI Express power connector for delivering that needed additional power to the graphics card. As I already mentioned, the GTX 1070 Ti has basically the same reference clock speeds compared to its brother, and this MSI's model to my surprise actually uses that same clocks, which is unusual as we are used to seeing it being factory overclocked right out of the box when it comes to MSI's models from Gaming X series and basically any other aftermarket graphics card model. As for now, with the current version of MSI's gaming app and cards BIOS, we don't have any preloaded OC mode profile to choose as you usually do, so I had to stick with the default one for my testing. In the end, that really doesn't matter that much, as the final frequency is dictated by the Nvidia's GPU Boost 3.0 technology, power delivery and thermals, and on account of that I was seeing GPU reaching just a bit above 1800 MHz at load. Although we had some rumors about GTX 1070 Ti being locked down for overclocking, that turned out to be false. Maybe that locked part was actually just for the manufacturers, as in they're not allowed to factory overclock them as per usual, which would somewhat explain this weird situation which I talked about a few sentences ago. Nevertheless, you can see here that I managed to increase the GPU and memory clock speeds using everyone's trusty tool, MSI's Afterburner, with which I managed to get around 500 MHz more more on the memory and on average set the GPU speed at around 1950 MHz. 
Checking out the performance of the card, as expected, the GTX 1070 Ti easily falls into play any game you want with it category. It pulls away from the regular GTX 1070 by a nice margin and actually closes in on GTX 1080 from not that far of a distance. High frame rate 1080p gaming does not represent a problem at all, while it can also handle anything above that within a reasonable limit. Like this, the GTX 1070 Ti is a fierce competitor to its red counterpart. And this Vega 56 model, which is probably why Nvidia decided to introduce this new series in the first place. All in all, it's a capable card which will ensure you playing games without need of upgrading in the near future. Taking a look at the performance of the cooler and temperatures, I was again greeted by the well-known stamina of MSI's Gaming X and Twin Frozer cooler design. During idle I was seeing temperatures of around 40 to 45 degrees Celsius on an open test bed, which is ok since the card is in so to speak passive mode as the fans are off thanks to the Zero Frozer feature which cuts them off when the GPU temperature is under 60 degrees Celsius. When it comes to load temperatures during gaming that was mostly around 65 5 degrees Celsius with fan speed being around 1000 RPM, while under Fermax 2S test it was just under 70 degrees Celsius with a bit higher fan speed of 1200 RPM. As for the noise that it makes, under idle obviously you won't hear a thing coming out of it, again thanks to the zero frozer feature, while during load it's still really whisper quiet making below 40 dB of noise. MSI again did their part in terms of properly covering the launch of yet another card, as they always do when it comes to their Gaming X series, so I don't actually have anything new to point out here, everything was already established well before this particular model. Putting that aside, on the other hand, when we talk about this new GPU series, the GeForce GTX 1070 Ti, Nvidia filled a pretty big gap between its weaker brother and the stronger GTX 1080. Positioning it actually more towards it as it only falls behind by 128 CUDA cores plus the performance difference between the GDDR5 and GDDR5X memory. The original MSRP price is set at $450 for the Founders Edition card, while I think you can expect a price tag of around $500 when it comes to aftermarket models. That's actually not that bad since you can as of now for example buy the GTX 1070 Gaming X model for $450, so that's a price difference of around $50 or even less with the reference card. While there is a still possibility that Nvidia will slightly correct the pricing of the GTX 1070 after this launch. It's hard to make a definitive conclusion as the GPU market is all over the place in terms of the pricing and availability, but if the difference between it and the GTX 1070 stays below $50, 
It's going to be a pretty decent deal and a quality opponent across all fields to aim this Vega 56 model which has similar pricing, especially since that one basically only comes in reference cooler design. That's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, that really helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this product or if you want to leave your suggestions, and of course feel free to subscribe for content further down the line or you can just check out some of my other videos from before. Until then, catch you later guys!